بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بك ومعرفة يا رب العالمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today insha'Allah we keep going with what we started we are still in Surah Al-Qasas and we already finished the uh, we already uh, finished Ayah 22 last week or the week before the last week and we will keep going insha'Allah uh, with the story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam we already mentioned that the Prophet Musa alayhi salam when this incident happened between him and uh, the people there that by it was the time that when he hit that person then that person passed away and when next day also the same person who was the reason for the fight one day earlier he did the same issue with another person then this incident happened and then everybody on the city in the city n knew that the prophet musa alayhi salam he was the one who was the reason for killing that person or he was the one who killed that person then another then one person and we said bin aqsal medina from nowhere he came to the prophet musa alayhi salam to tell him we already mentioned the reason behind this and how this happened then the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he went somewhere. He went toward Madian, toward Yemen. But he didn't know that he is going there. He didn't know where is he going. He just left. He was scared. He was worried. He didn't know what may happen. So he just went toward that place. But he didn't plan for it. He didn't think of it. He didn't arrange it. He didn't put a schedule for his trip. So this is for us to know that when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He wants to give you something, He will lead you to the place where you should be to get that thing. And this is actually, this is something very important for all of us to understand. It is not by coincidence. Actually, we don't have something called coincidence. If we are talking about things based on Islam, Actually, we don't have something called coincidence in Islam. What do I mean by this? When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is arranging something for you, so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala arrange it as a full package. What does this mean? When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is arranging, for example, a job for you in, let us say, one country, so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala arrange, He arranges the tools and the way for you to go to that country. Now when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wants you or already arrange providing for you in that company, then no matter what is your qualification, no matter what is your certificate, no matter what is your situation, they, it is written already that you will get something from that company. You will get some money from that company. And we said this before. All what you have to choose is, are you going to get it in halal or in haram? Are you going to get it in a good way or in a bad way? Because it is already confirmed that you will get something from that company. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He is in charge of making it totally arranged for you in the way that you will get what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is arranging for you to get. This is in everything. This is not only when we are talking about money. This is in everything. 
So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala cares about all of us, so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala arranges things for all of us. And then all what we have to do is to take it or leave it. See, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He is already arranging things for the Prophet Musa alayhi salam to reach to Yemen. So all of these arrangements, it was all of these arrangements, they were for the Prophet Musa alayhi salam to leave. What we want to say here is do not be sad whatever is happening. Do not regret for whatever happens as long as you are worshipping Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. As long as you are following the rules of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. As long as you are obeying Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then don't be afraid of anything because everything is arranged in a perfect way. Whatever is happening to you, as long as you are for in the circle of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, so whatever is happening to you, it is for your own benefit. It is for your own good. So be happy all the time. Whatever is happening, it is for your own good. Did the Prophet Musa alayhi salam know from the beginning that he will become a prophet? He didn't know. He didn't know. Yes, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala already inspired his mother, the mother of Musa alayhi salam, that min al that we will make him a messenger. But the Prophet Musa alayhi salam himself, he didn't know this. So all what he did is that he was in the circle of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. What did he say? Qala asa rabbi an yahdiyani sawa as-sabeel. And we said, when we say asa, when we are talking about Allah, then asa, this means for sure. When we are talking about ourselves, then asa means maybe. So asa, when we are talking about ourselves, maybe. Asa, when we are talking about Allah, then it is confirmation. It will happen. Yahdiyani sawa as-sabeel, that he will lead me to the pit. Now we are in ayah 23. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولما ورد ماء مدين وجد عليه أمة أمة من الناس يسقون ووجد من دونهم امرأتين تذودان قال ما خطبكما قالت لا نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء الرعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير. Now here in this ayah there are a lot of things we need to understand. And there are a lot of rules from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala teaching us in this ayah, only in this ayah. How? The first thing is warada. The word warada. Walamma warada ma amadiyya. Warada means reach there or arrived there or came to. Ma'a madiyan. Ma is water. Madiyan is what is today is Yemen. So it was that that area it had water is it a river is it a tunnel is it a lake anyway place that has water now first i want to talk about the word warada there are some people in another ayah in chapter 19 allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says wa minkum illa wariduha kana ala rabbika hatman maqdiya وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدَهَا All of you, there is none among you, means we, human beings, there is nobody will not, now this is the point, the point وَارِدُهَا means will not pass by Jahannam. Now, some people, they say, no, وَارَدَ it doesn't mean pass, it means reach there and get in and, and feel it. But then here, we can see When Musa arrived, passed by the water in Madia. So he didn't get in and he didn't drink even. He just passed by, he saw Wajada. We know it from, from this sentence, let us say, from this ayah. We could know that he didn't get into the water and he didn't even touch the water yet. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala used the same word, Warada. So we go back to chapter 19, Wa imminkum illa wariduha means everybody will see Jahannam. Yes, we know that everybody will see Jahannam, Jahannam. Because we know, we know that everybody will pass on the Sirat. Everybody 
will pass on the Sirat. And some will fall down, some will be hurt and then reach, and some will reach so fast. But we know that everybody will see Jahannam. And we know also, We know that Jahannam will be in front of everybody on the Day of Judgment. We know this. So this ayah is explaining to us that وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا means everybody will see Jahannam, not everybody will be in Jahannam. This is to understand that if somebody is discussing this with you, then it is so simple. Based on this ayah, it is so clear that وَارَدَ it doesn't mean get in or involved or touch. No, it means only see. So, what happened? Musa alayhi salam, he walked from Egypt to Yemen which is a very far away distance. And we said he didn't have BMW that time. And he didn't have airplane that time. He didn't have any kind, any of these facilities. He even didn't have a camel. He even didn't have a horse. He was walking because he was running away and he didn't know what will happen. And he was afraid that if anybody see him, then he will be dead. He will be dead. So he just ran away. He didn't have enough food, he didn't have money, he didn't have clothes, he didn't have anything. He just ran away. That person came to him, told him, people, they are arranging to kill you. So he ran away right away. So he didn't know, he, he didn't plan it, and he didn't have anything. He just walked. And what do you expect a person find in a desert on a way between Egypt to Yemen? Most of it is desert. What do you expect him to find? Actually, all of it was desert. What do you expect from him to find? Nothing. Sometimes he finds some grass or some trees or that's all. So, according to the stories about the Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, that he was only eating the grass, he was only eating the leaves from the trees, and that's all. He was not eating anything. And that he became so weak, he became so thin, and, and it is not mentioned how long. It didn't mention how long did he spend to reach there. But of course, he was a normal human being. He was walking. So, so of course, it took a long time with him. Then he reached to Madian, which was uh, Madian, which is now today, which is Yemen, that area. He reached there. When he reached there, he found this water. Let us say that it is small lake or tunnel or even well we don't know anyway he found water what happened is that when he found this water the first thing his eyes come on or 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 so was something to him it was strange so what is this thing it was that he found those people those young men strong men they have they are the sheep keepers and they are helping their sheep, they are bringing their sheep, they are, they are forcing or they are helping their sheep to drink more water. To drink more water. And there were different ways to help them to drink more water. Like they play with the water a little bit so they let them drink or they show them something that they, while they are drinking then they are attracted with that thing while they are drinking, so they drink more. They wanted them to drink more. More. We understand that this is because this is maybe the only place that has water in this way. Now, Musa alayhi salam, he saw this. This was normal. But what was the thing that was abnormal for Musa alayhi salam to see? وَوَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمْ مُمْرَأَتَيْنِ And he saw, مِن دُونِهِمْ means away from them. مِن دُونِهِمْ means away from them. They they already took a side. Who? Mra'atain. Two females. Tadudan. Tadudan means those two females. They have their ships. And Tadudan means those two females. They are preventing those ships from coming closer to the water. They don't want those ships to come to the place where there is a water. Why? Because they don't want, because those two females, they don't want to be close to male. They don't want to be mixed with the male. They don't want to be in touch with the male. So they were keeping their sheep away. 
Musa alayhi salam, he saw this. So what was the surprising thing to Musa? The surprising thing to Musa was that he saw two females working in a place that has a lot of milk. This is the first thing we learn. This is the first thing we learn that in the Islamic society, it is so strange to see a female working in a place that is full of milk. And of course, today it is normal for us. But actually, based on Quran, this is abnormal. Based on Quran, this shouldn't be something normal. And now we will know. When we keep going with the few ayahs here, we will know a lot of things. Right away, Musa alayhi salam, he saw something wrong. This is So the first thing we learn from this ayah is that female shouldn't work in a place that has a lot of male or that is full of males and that then they become friends and they become close and then even even they start to share their private stories and things with each other. Why? So this is the first wrong thing. The second thing, Musa alayhi salam went to them. And this is a very important issue we need to learn. Musa alayhi salam, he didn't say, Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwata illa, ha, illa billah, how come those two females, they do this, this is haram, this is not okay, and left. No, he didn't do this. And he didn't put their photos on Facebook and then start to criticize them. And he didn't write articles about how haram and bad and big sin are those two fame females they are doing and they will go to hell. No, he didn't. What did he do? He went to them and asked them what is going on. So this is another thing we need to learn in Islam. When you see something wrong, do not only criticize, correct them. When you see something wrong, do not only attack, check what is going on, check what is the problem. Maybe there is a reason behind this wrong thing happening and maybe you could help stopping it. So this is the second thing we learn. Musa alayhi salam, he went to them. Of course, he didn't went to say, went to them and say, hello, hi, nice girls, how are you, and what are you doing? No, of course not. Qala mu'ahmaqat bukuma. This word, ma'ahat bukuma, we could learn from this word, we could understand and know from this word that he only went to solve the problem. He doesn't want to know a lot of detail. He just went there. Ma'ahat bukuma, it means what is going on? What is the problem? What I see that there is a problem here. Two females, they are with a lot of male here, and you are trying to be away from them, and you have your ships, and you are trying to keep these ships away. So this means that there is something wrong. There is something wrong first that you are here. So he asked them, what is your problem? And both, and in public. He didn't go to them and say, uh, would you please come with me uh, here for a while? I want to tell you something, you know, privately. No, he just went there. Ma'khat bukuma. What is going on? Qalata. So now we are learning another thing. Qalata la nasri hatta yuzdir al ri'a. They said. They said. So this means that he didn't talk to one of them privately. No, he was talking to both of them. And then they said, both of them, they replied. They said. We don't come closer. We don't allow our ship to come closer. means until those. Ri'a is a plural of ra'i. The plural of a ship keeper. When they leave, when they leave, then we come. Why? Because we shouldn't be in touch with them. Because when we bring our sheep and we come closer to them, then those men, they will say, it's okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. You just have a seat there. By the way, what is your name? Where do you live? And so on. They know this. And they know that it is not allowed. They know that it is prohibited. So they were aside, away. And they don't let their sheep, they don't let their belongings go there. It means they don't make any excuse or they don't allow any chance to put themselves in a place that they do something that they, that it shouldn't be done. Now, they also give the reason why this is happening. Because we are not happy to do it. We are not really 
so excited that we will go out, we will see people, we will talk to people, and we will have fun with others. No. وَأَبُونَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ Abuna, our father, Shaykhun Kabir. Shaykh means old man. Kabir means old. But why both of them, we put them together? Because Shaykh means a respected old man. Shaykh means someone who has knowledge. Someone who is a respected person. Kabir means old. And both, they mean that our father is someone who knows the rules of Allah is someone who is a respected person, is someone who is also old man, so he cannot do it by himself. Clear? Now, What did Musa alayhi salam do here? Did he give them a lecture that, you know, sisters, this is haram. You know, sister, you shouldn't do this. You know, you should tell your father that, that he has to find someone to do it. Did he give them a lecture no did he start to talk to them okay fine i'll do it for you and every day you come here and you will see me here and i will be here and i will be helping you also no did he tell them that uh i have to see your father and i have to tell him that this is not okay no no no, no. allah tabaraka wa ta'ala now we are in ayah 24 allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is teaching us or telling us how prophets they deal with issues and teaching us how we should deal with issues. Now we are in Ayah 24. Finish. Fasaqa means so he helped them to let their sheep drink. How did he help them? There are different stories. The most authentic one is that, you know, we already said that Musa was big and strong. What he did is that the well or or let us say the tunnel of water you know the the ditch of water let us say it had the water and then at the end or at the middle or whatever there was a very big huge rock or stone so it was blocking the water from from keep going so it was stuck there musa alayhi salam he just came and he removed that stone that stone According to the stories, they say that it needs at least 10 people to remove it. And Musa alayhi salam, just removed it. So the water keep moving. So he brought those sheep and let them drink. So Musa alayhi salam was not also showing them how strong is he. And, you know, he was, he was not just making this, this show. No, he just did what he has to do. فَسَقَى لَهُمَا so we learn from here that he just did it and left. So he didn't wait for them to say thank you. He didn't take photos with them. He didn't just, you know, start to flutter them, you know, to, to talk to them and so on. No. He helped them. He finished the thing that they should do it. He did it for them. And then they left, of course. Then he went to, there is one tree, he sit under that tree. Dil means the shadow. So he did his duty first. He finished it. Then he moved away. He sit under that tree. And then after he finished his duty, this is a very important thing we need to learn. After he finished his duty, after he did what he has to do, after he finished his homework, after he did what Allah is ordering him to do, then he raised his hand and make dua. Today, today, we make the dua while we are sleeping. We make the dua while we are eating. We make the dua while we are having fun. We make the dua while we are relaxing. But... Are we doing our duties? Are we doing what we have to do? Are we following the rules of Allah? Are we doing our best and then raising our hands and say, Ya Allah, we are doing what you are ordering us to do and we are asking you to support us. No. Today, unfortunately, many of us, we skip the first part. We just sit and then we say, Oh Allah, bring victory to us. We don't deserve it. 
we don't deserve it. If like this, we don't deserve it. Today, see, for example, 90% of our imams in all over the world today, what they do, what they do, or maybe let us say 80% if I don't want to exaggerate, what they do, they only do the dua, oh Allah, Oh Allah, destroy the, 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 the kafirin, destroy the disbelievers. Oh Allah, those who are fighting against us, you kill them. It means it means you you, you go and do it by yourself. We, it is not our business. No. He did what he has to do. He finished his duty first. He did all the things he has to do. Then, فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فقير. Then he said, Oh Allah, and see... See how Musa alayhi salam, how was he, how polite was he? He didn't say, oh Allah, I am poor and I don't have money and I don't have food and I don't have clothes and I don't have home and I don't have family. He didn't say this. Well, actually, if he said this, he is telling the truth. If he said this, he is telling the truth. He didn't eat for a long time and he didn't have anything. He didn't have clothes. He didn't have anything. He didn't even have a vehicle, which is a horse or a donkey or, or a camel. He didn't have anything. If he said this, he, he wouldn't be lying. But what did he say? رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ Oh Allah, you have given me a lot. You have given me. But I am poor a little bit. رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ Oh Allah, you already gave me a lot, but, rely, re, but regarding those things for eating and drinking and clothes, clothing and so on, yes, I am faqir, I am poor, I am in need. What does this mean? What are we learning from this? We are learning from this that we should admit when we are in need, we ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He knows. He knows that we are in need. And do not say in a way that, no, 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 no need to ask. No, it's okay. No, why? We are not asking you to ask people. Although sometimes Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will send people to you to ask them. And when this happened, now we are learning. Now we are, we are learning from, the, from those ayahs. When this happened, don't reject it. Musa alayhi salam. He knew that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has given him a lot of khair. Khair means good thing. And this is why he said, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khair. Oh Allah, you already gave me a lot. I have a lot of khair. But the part of the khair, the part of the good things regarding eating and drinking and clothing and, and safety and house and family, yes, I am faqir. Yes, I am poor. I'm in need of this. There is no problem to ask. Here the Prophet is asking. There is no problem to ask. But there is a problem to ask without working. There is a problem to ask without doing what you have to do. There is a problem to ask while you are not really sure that you will get what you are asking for. And not really sure, not because of yourself. No, because of Allah. That you think that anyway, Allah will not listen to me. Why Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Do do your duty. Do what you have to do and you will see what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will give you. Now we are in Ayah 25 and let us see what happened. Musa alayhi salam, he asked this question. Now we are in Ayah 25. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, فَجَاءَتْهُ See, fa. This fa, before I keep going with the ayah, this fa is to know that it is for the sudden, right away. Let us read the ayah. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاء قَالَتْ إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ, لي... يدعوك لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجْرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ وَقَصَّ عَلَيْهِ الْقَصَصِ قَالَ لَا تَخَفْ نَجَوْتَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِ let us, let us learn from this ayah. And also we're going to learn a lot of things from this ayah. There are two ways to read this ayah. Or, Now, One of them, one of those two females came to him. Fa means right away. It means right after he finishes dua. 
when you are dealing with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this would happen. Does Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala have any problem to give you anything? No. Is it difficult for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to do anything he wants? No. Musa alayhi salam did his duty, ask a question, right away he get it. Ask for something, right away he get it. Why? Because he deserved to get it. Is it because Allah was able to do it to Musa and he is not able to do it for you? Of course not. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is able to do it for everybody. But because Musa alayhi salam, he was qualified. And let us see, when we say he was qualified, let us see what is the meaning of qualified. Qualified. It doesn't mean that when the person is qualified, so he will never get in trouble in all of his life. This is wrong. Actually, it is the opposite. To be qualified, you have to get in trouble in your life. To become a qualified person for asking and getting what you are asking for, you need to get the training. You need to join the classes, to join the course, and then to pay for it. And then you need to practice. And then you need to join the exam. The first exam and the second exam and the third exam and the first year, the second year, the third year, and only Allah knows how many years and how many exams, and then you will be qualified. Then you will become qualified. Then you will become, if Musa alayhi salam, he had a stick that he just touched the ocean or the sea, it becomes mountain. This is not because of the stick. This is because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is listening to what Musa alayhi salam is asking. This is because Musa alayhi salam, he worked hard to become qualified person that when he asks Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will give him what he is asking for. This is why we said that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, he said in one, had, in one hadith that Inna lillahi ibadan law aqsamu ala Allah la abahu law aqsamu alayhi la abahu that there are some servants of Allah when they swear by Allah asking Allah to do something for them Allah will do it for them this is not because Allah is afraid of them this is not because there is there is an agreement between them and Allah that Allah should listen to them no this is because they were qualified people they became qualified people to get what they are asking for you want to be one of those people I want to be one of those people. Do we want to be one of those people? Then we have to work on it. And this is the thing that we need to understand. That there is nothing for free. If you get in the bus, how much is it? A few dollars. You get in the bus and then the bus driver, he asks you to pay. Then you say, May Allah reward you, inshallah, no problem, inshallah, you, you will get the payment in paradise. What will he do? Will he accept it? Even if he is a very good believer, will he accept it? If he is very nice, then he will, he may ask you, do you have money or you don't have money? This is if he is nice. Now, if he is nice and then he found that you have money, what will he do? Now, if he is nice, he will not do anything. He'll just open the door and just ask you to get out. That's all. This is if he is nice. But if he is not nice, all of us, we know what will happen. Now, why do we expect everything from Allah for free? Only because he is the God? Only because he is the creator? Actually, because he is God and because he is the creator, then he has the right to ask for more things than other, than anyone else. Why are we dealing with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in a way that it is his duty to give us everything? And at the end, it is his duty to grant us paradise. Why do we think in this way? Why do we think in this way? This is wrong. And this way will lead us to pay a lot. And this way will cost us a lot on the day of judgment. It is not like this. There are rules and there are duties. Do you, do you, is there any university in all over the world that you just... Go there and then you don't wear uniform and you don't study and you don't join classes and you don't join the exam and then you just go there and ask them, would you please give me a PhD uh, certificate of this and that? What will happen? They will take you to a hospital because they will think that you have a psycho problem. Why are we doing this when we are dealing with a lot about it?
why do we think why do we think that with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala everything is available everything is okay everything is no problem why do we think so why do we think so why do we think that with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala no need to do anything no need just everything is fine and going well and no need to do any efforts why it is not like this so when you are doing your duty when you are following the rules of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and then when you ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala you will get what you are asking for but how will you get it don't expect Allah to come down and give you what you want don't expect Allah to come in your dream and answer your questions don't expect Allah to send angels to deal with you don't expect Allah to send money from you from the sky on your bed this will not happen but Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is dealing with us in a, in a way that we can accept what do I mean by we can accept we can handle what do I mean by we can handle imagine for example if the door is knocked and then you open the door and then he tell you that I am the angel, the angel blah 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 and I come to you from Allah just to do this and that for you what will happen to you you will faint that is if not you will have heart attack no but Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will do it in a different way not because he is unable to do other ways he is able to do everything but because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is dealing with us in expected way for us to accept it and also for us to learn that we should be realistic we should be reasonable so فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءُ one of them one of those two females came to him came to Musa alayhi salam right away قَالَتْ right away she didn't come and say do you remember me I am that girl that you were helping no of course not and she didn't come and say hello hi how are you are you still tired are you hungry are you thirsty and by the way where are you from no قَالَتْ right away she said إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجْرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا my father see right away it is from my father I'm not coming by myself my father is inviting you to the house to pay you to pay you for what you did لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجْرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا to pay you for the job you did clear that's it this is the message so what do we understand from this we understand from this first that there is nothing hidden between the family members those two females when they went back those two daughters when they went back right away they told their father that there was a man there he helped us he was strong and he helped us and he seems to be stranger and poor clear so they already told the story to their father in the correct way and in a clear way so the father when he understood this so right away he knew that he has to do something that he has to pay back but actually he has to help but to help in a nice way she she didn't go to him and say here you go take this this small food this small money or this some food you look poor and you look miserable and you look you look in a disaster so you just take it anyway you are poor man and we are giving you this no 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 we want to pay you for what you did it means that we are paying you something you deserve it we are not doing a favor to you today how many of us are dealing with people in this way today how many of us are dealing with people in a way that we show them that we are equal it is not that I am doing a favor to you we are learning we are learning and also here there is something big means with shyness what is the meaning of with shyness it means that she is not really expert in dealing with men it means that she is not really perfect in attracting male as what is happening these days with us it means that she is not expert she doesn't really have have this experience in dealing with men because because 
it shouldn't happen because it shouldn't be like this. So it is not something that she does it every day 230 times. No. It is something maybe this is the first time in her life that she is doing it. This is why Tamshi ala stihya or ala stihya in qala. So she comes with shyness and she said with the shyness, Inna abi yad'u. It is from my father. It is not from me. Come to my house. I'm inviting you. No, it is from my father. Inna abi yad'u ka liyajziya ka ajra ma saqayta lana. My father is inviting you to appreciate what you did to pay you for your favor. Now, falamma jahu. Falamma jahu means as so when he reached to him, when Musa reached to the father of those two girls, what does this mean? What does this mean? This means that Musa didn't reject. And this means that Musa didn't even discuss. And this means that Musa, he knew right away that this is the answer of his dua and that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is helping him through those people. That's all. So when you receive help from somebody, do not reject it. When you help some when you receive help from someone and you know that you already did your duty, then you have to understand that this is the answer of your dua from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala choose this way to help you. Because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has the right to choose the way He likes to help you. And this is exactly the same thing regarding becoming a Muslim. Regarding knowing Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And listen carefully. Sometimes you know Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala through a bad incident happened to you. Sometimes you come through knowing the religion of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala through a disaster happened to you. So do not put them together. What do I mean by do not put them together? Do not say that why is this happening to me? And what did I do? What is the wrong thing I did in my life? I didn't do anything bad in my life. You don't think about it like this. You just think that you are going to get something very valuable, which is Islam. You are going to get through a very perfect way of worshipping, which is to worship Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. It's okay to pay this payment. And we always say that the rewarding based on the payment. You cannot go to the shop, to the company that they are selling Mercedes, and then you tell them that I have this hundred dollar and I want you to give me one Mercedes. This will not happen. They will tell you, okay, with this one hundred dollar you can go to that shop and you can buy one Mercedes made of paper. Maybe it is like one hundred dollar or maybe made of plastic. Maybe you will find it. It is a small model only. It is not a real Mercedes. So you are going to you are getting into something that will lead you to a perfect life in this life and in the hereafter. So don't look at the disaster you had, you had. Don't look at that disaster in a way that you don't deserve it. You look at that disaster in a way that if because of that disaster, you become a sincere worshiper or servant of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then that disaster is nothing comparing to what you get. So we need to adjust ourselves. We need to take it in this way. And we need always to remember. Musa alayhi salam, where was he living? He was living in the palace of Fir'aun. Right? He was eating and drinking and sleeping and everything for free. He was not doing anything. And his mother and all of his family. Right? We know his story. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he forced Musa alayhi salam 
to go out of the whole country or area or city or whatever and hiding and running away and without any arrangement. Why? Why? What was the wrong thing Musa did? He didn't do anything wrong. Yes, he punched that person. It was not wrong. He was helping his people and he was helping his, let us say, brother who was who was humiliated and tortured, he and all the all the children of Israel by by Egyptian there by Pharaoh and his people, for how many years? For such long time they were being tortured, and Musa was just bringing victory. He was bringing justice. He was helping those those humiliated people. He didn't do anything wrong. Yet he was kicked out in this way, or he ran away in this way. Musa alayhi salam, he didn't do anything wrong to have this disaster life for this time. But look at all of these things happened to Musa alayhi salam, and look at the result at the end. What was the result at the end? Musa taklima. The result at the end was that Musa alayhi salam, he was the one that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala didn't even send Jibreel to him. He was talking to him directly. He became a messenger and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala was talking to him directly. Now, which one is bigger? The rewarding or the disaster that happened to Musa? The disaster was nothing comparing with what he get. We have to think of our life in this way. We have to think of everything around us in this way. Yes, now you are suffering. You have problems. You don't have money. Your health is not good. You don't have job. You you are even being attacked, humiliated by people, whatever, all of those things. But are you worshipping Allah? Yes. Are you following the rules of Allah? Yes. Are you seeking the halal and being away from haram? Yes. Are you doing all of your duties based on Islam? Yes then be happy. Be happy because this, if you feel that this suffering is big, then you can imagine how huge rewarding you will get, and not only in the hereafter, in this life. This is what we see. See the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Was he tortured or not? Was he attacked or not? Was he humiliated or not? Were people trying to kill him or not? Yes, what happened at the end? At the end, what happened? At the end, he, 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 became, he became the biggest person in the world. He became the king. He became the emperor. He became the leader. He became everything. He had everything. He had, before he died, he had everything. And he was still Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, when you are following the rules of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and accepting everything coming from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then don't worry. If you feel if you see big issues coming over you, upon you, then this means that the rewarding is even much, much, much bigger than this. And it will be in this life before the here out the hereafter, inshaAllah. So Falamma Ja Musa alayhi salam right away he went with that female with that lady, female, whatever. And on the way, according to the stories, on the way, it seems that she was walking in front of him. Because she knows the way, Musa doesn't know the way. It seems that she was walking in front of him. So, when she was walking in front of him, he was looking at her, maybe it was windy or whatever, so he was trying to control his eyes not to look at her, but he knows his ability. He is a human being and, you know, with all of those things around him and so on. So he didn't want to look at her. So then he told her, okay, I walk in front and you walk in the back and you just tell me where to go, right, left and so on. She said, fine. Then she was walking behind him. He was walking in front. Then when she was talking to him, right, left, this way, then he was afraid that he would be attracted to her voice. This is what they say in the story. Anyway, the important thing is that we know from the story how how um, how clean was he. 
So then he was afraid that he will be attracted with what she say, with her voice or whatever. So then he told her, okay, just hold a few stones. And then, you know, when when you want me to go right, you throw the stone on the right. When you want me to go left, you throw the stone on the left and don't talk. Anyway, finally, they reached there. So Musa salam didn't reject. He accepted. He knew that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he went there. Now, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ Musa went there, arrived there. And this is one of the things that we need to understand when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us a story it is not a story from a mother to her kid to sleep. No, it is a story from Allah for us to understand. So don't don't check the details if Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala didn't mention the details. And this is one of the problems we have in our teaching. This is one of the problems we have, unfortunately. For example, in chapter 18, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, about the people of the cave. They are a group of young men. Amanu bi Believed in Allah. Was it now Muda? Because they believed in Allah. We, Allah, taught them how to become perfect. Now, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, Inna hum fitya. They are a group of young men. That's all. We find hundreds of books today. Hundreds of books. They are explaining to you who are those fitya, who are those young men. From where did you get this information? And why are you wasting your time and the time of a lot of people who are reading it for nothing? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, did he know about them or not? He did. Did he know how many of them or not? He did. Did he know their names or not? He did. Did he know their family names or not? He did. Why he didn't mention it? Why he didn't mention it? Is it was it a quiz for us to try to solve it? No. Because it is not important. You take the value of the story. The, the value of the story is that those are young men. And those young men, they believe in Allah. And those young men, they were spreading the religion of Allah. And those young men, when they found that they cannot, they left their houses, their land, their everything, and they went to the cave. This is what we need to learn. This is what we need to learn, that's all. سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةٌ رَابِعُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ وَسَادِسُهُمْ وَسَادِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ رَجْمًا بِاللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ سَمْ Allah تبارك و تعالى saying they said that they are three or other they said they are four other they say that they are five وَرَبِّي أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ you just tell them Allah knows how many are they this is not your business unfortunately today we leave those valuable things and we go through those small things we leave those valuable things we go through those small things. Like what? Like, for example, Imam. So the female, when she is praying, if she show her toe, so her praying is accepted or not. Now, she is praying in a perfect submission and she is praying in a way that she see Allah in front of her and she see hell in front of her and she see paradise in front of her and and she is in a total submission. The only problem she has is that she may show her toe. We this is the only thing we have. This is this is the only thing we need to learn. Or some others they say, Imam, so so what if the person who is leading the prayer he doesn't have beard? So shall we pray behind him? Or better to find someone who has beard to pray behind him. What if he is not wearing a hat? What if he is not wearing white dress? What, 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 what? Is this what we get from praying? Is this what we get from praying? Is this what we get from all what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala told us about praying in Quran? It was so easy for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to mention all of those things in Quran. He didn't. He didn't. It was so easy for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to send Jibreel and tell the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to talk about this and this and that in details. He didn't. Why? Because there is something more important. There is something more important. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And in another ayah, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ The important thing is to learn how to purify yourself. The important thing is to learn wisdom. The important thing is to learn how to deal with Allah and then how to deal with people. And then how you pray and what do you have to dress, how you make ablution and this and that, those are important. But they are not everything in Islam. 
Musa alayhi salam, he reached there. Waqassa alayhi al qasas Musa alayhi salam, he told that man the story. Al qasas means the stories, the whole details, what happened from the beginning. From the beginning, what happened? Now, of course, some some uh, some books about Sira and about the prophets, they say that that person, that father of those two females, he is the prophet Shuai. And some books, they don't mention it. For us, and in Quran, it is not mentioned. But for us, we know that this person, based on Quran, this person is someone who is qualified to take care of Musa. Otherwise, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he will not send Musa there. Is someone who is a good believer, a good servant of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, was chosen by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala for Musa alayhi salam to grow up. What do I mean by grow up? To grow up, to become a mature person, ready to become a messenger in that house. Clear? So maybe he is the Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam. Maybe he is not. It is not a big issue. It is not a big issue. Now, Qassa alayhi al-Qassas, Musa alayhi salam, he told him the story, his story, what happened. Qala, so that person, Shu'aib or not Shu'aib, whatever, that person, Qala, he replied, Musa, la takhaf, don't worry, don't be scared, you are safe. Najawta min al-qawm al-thalimin, you are safe here, you are safe from the wrongdoing people. So it means that he knew that those people of Fir'aun, they were wrongdoing people. So this means that he is a special person to Allah. This means that he is someone chosen by Allah. Wa now we learn another big thing. We are now in Ayah 26. قالت إحداهما يا أبت استأجر إن خير من استأجرت القوي الأمين قالت إحداهما one of those two females one of those two daughters said يا أبت استأجر father استأجر means hire him إن خير من استأجرت القوي الأمين the best one you hire Father, the best one you hire is Al Qawi Al Amin. Al Qawi is strong. Al Amin is the, the trustworthy. Now let us get into few things here. The father, he already told Musa, don't worry, you are safe now. So the two females, the two daughters, they knew that the father is planning to let that person, means Musa alayhi salam, to stay with them. Uh -huh. Okay. So now here there is something. He will stay. We, the two females, we want to know what is he going to do here. Stay for what? Staying for eating and drinking and leaving for two, three hours? Fine, no problem. But if he's going to stay here, then we have to know the situation. We have to know based on what he will stay here. So, one of those two females, one of those two daughters, she said, talking to the father, to her father, Ya Abatistajir, father, why don't you hire him? It means he will be our employee. So he will do the job that you are asking us to do. What do we learn from this? First, we learn that those two females, they were unhappy going out every day for offering the water to the sheep. So this means that the stable female, the stable female is the female who is in general unhappy working outside, unhappy dealing with people outside. She is more happy staying at home. She is more happy dealing with things at home. And here, of course, there are a lot of people, they say that, see, in Islam, in Islam, there is no freedom for the female. See, in Islam, Muslim men, they are controlling the female. They are using the female as slaves. 
if it is like this, then the male is the one who should sit at home and the female is the one who should working outside. If it is like this, because which one is better to sit at home or to go outside? See how, see how today we are making the things upside down. Which one is nicer to sit and relax at home or to work outside from morning to evening? Which one is nicer? Which one is better? Which one is more relaxing? Of course, to sit at home is more relaxing. You will have more freedom. No need to wear this and that. And no need to deal with a lot of people. Some you know, some you don't know. And no need to go outside. It is raining or it is hot or it is cold or it is summer or it is winter or whatever. And no need to run and jump in the MTR and in the, in the bus and, in the, the, and this and that. No need for any of those things. Just sit and relax at home. But which one is, which one is better? Sitting at home is better. If... In Islam, the male, they are controlling the female. So this means that the female should go outside and work and the male should sit at home and relax. But the situation is the opposite. The male is the one who should be working outside. The male is the one in charge of bringing money. The male is the one in charge of solving the problems of the house out of the house. The male is in problem of all of those things and the female is in charge of the thing that she can do it at home while she is sitting at home, relaxing at home. Yes, sometimes she becomes tired. Yes, sometimes she becomes, she feels bored, but she has the total freedom. When she wants to go out, she can go out. When she wants to, to, to meet her female friends, she can meet her female friends. When she wants to go out for shopping, then her husband must take her outside out for shopping and so on. Then where is where is the controlling that people are talking about? Here we learn those two daughters who are who are well raised up by their father, then she said, Oh fine, we could find someone. So father, please hire him. We don't want to go out. We want to stay at home. We don't want to go out. Yeah, I bet it's the jail. And then she was making advertisement for Musa. <laughs> she was advertising him. She was convincing her father to accept. He is good person. Al Qawi, he is strong. How did they know that he is strong? They saw him how he removed the stone outside. So they could see that he is strong. It is not only his shape and his body, he is really strong in action because they saw him how he moved this stone. Al Amin, how did she, that one who talked, how did she know that he is Amin, that he is trustworthy? Because actually, she was the one who went to bring him. So she found that he was very polite. She found that he was not trying to take advantage of talking to her or being away, being out with her alone. Or, or So she found that he was trustworthy. So this means that the one who talked, the female, the daughter who talked, was the daughter who went to bring Musa. Clear? Now, the father, he accept. The father, he accept. Why? Because the father is also not happy that his daughters, they are going out every day. And this is another, this is another lesson to the fathers. Today, unfortunately, mashallah, we find our fathers today, and of course, not all of them, alhamdulillah, many of them, they are very good fathers and so on. But we still find some Muslim fathers today that they are happy when they see their daughters dancing. See, mashallah, this is my daughter, look at her. Oh, and see, she is going to be on TV also a few days later. Mashallah, oh, she grow up, see, look at her, she danced very well. She danced even better than her mother. See? And he is still praying. He is still saying that he is Muslim. While here, we see what what yeah, what what Shuaib or what what that person he did. He knew. Okay, I will accept him. But I must have rules. What are those rules? He wants him to work, but in the house there are two daughters. There are two females in the house, and I am an old man. So he gave him the offer right away. Qala, now Shu'aib or that person is talking. Qala, inni uridu an unikihaka ihda ibnatayya hatayn. 
على أن تأجرني ثمانية حجج فإن أتممت عشرا فمن عندك وما أريد أن أشق عليك ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصالحين see the message now Shuaib let us say Shuaib عليه السلام or that man he wanted Musa عليه السلام to work for him so then see when Musa عليه السلام when he made the dua what did he say he said I am poor I need some food and I need some clothes that's all قال ربي إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير فقير I, I, I am poor with those things I only need some food and I need some clothes maybe that's all but what did Allah تبارك وتعالى offer him let us see what did he offer him قال إني أريد أن أنكحك إحدى ابنتي هاتين that man that father he said look I am offering those two daughters for you I want you to get married to one of them see so first of course of course once Musa alayhi salam he arrived to the house then the food was ready they offer him the food this is in the story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam they offer him the food Musa alayhi salam rejects he said I don't do something and ask for payment when I do something for the sake of Allah. I didn't do a job. I did a favor and I'm waiting for the rewarding from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He, Musa alayhi salam, wanted to make it clear, wanted to make sure that is this the answer from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala or this is something, uh, or this is another thing. So that person, he replied him, Shu'aib or not, he replied him, he told him, you are in a house that whoever gets in should eat and drink. We are not stingy, we are generous. So then Musa alayhi salam ate. So the eating and drinking already finished. The eating and drinking already finished. But when you are asking Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to give you something, then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will give you what you are asking for and then he will give you some bonus. And this bonus according to the ability of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The first bonus here for Musa alayhi salam is what? Is a job. Is a job. What is the second bonus? A wife. So it's a family. It's a job, a wife, then it is a house. It is a place to live. Then it is a family. It is everything. It is everything. So when you are asking Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and when you are qualified to ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, even if you are not 100% qualified, if you are not qualified to ask, Allah is qualified to answer. But don't depend totally on Him without doing anything. You have to do something. You have to offer something. Not because Allah needs it. No, because you need it. Because you need to feel that you paid something for this. So if you are not qualified to ask, Allah is qualified to answer. If you are not qualified to take, Allah is qualified to give. But at least you have to do something. Not because Allah needs it. No, because you need it. Because you need to do something makes you feel that you need Allah. Clear? So, he offered him. He said, I want you to get married to one of those daughters. Okay, what is the dowry? What is the payment? The payment, the dowry, is to work for me eight years. Thamaniya hijaj. Hijaj is, hijaj is the plural of hajj. So it is year. So eight years. So then the dowry is eight years working. But of course it is not working for free. It is working and you are, you are eating and drinking and, and living here and everything is fine. And this is your wife. So both of you, you are living here. You are eating and drinking from what you work and you are sleeping from what you work. So this is the dory. From here we learn, actually from here, the, the imams, they say that also this means that the dory could be paid later. No need to pay, to be paid right away. Anyway, this is another story. So, Thamaniya Hijaz, eight years. And if you make it ten, then it will be better. But... But I don't want to make it difficult on you. So it is eight. The, the, the deal, the contract is eight years. But if you work ten, then it is extra from you. It is 
it is better. You will find out, inshallah, that I'm a good man. You will find that I'm a righteous person. You will find that I am someone who is not controlling my employee. You will find that I am someone who is easygoing and, and who deal with people in a nice way. So see Musa alayhi salam, after what happened to him, after this suffering, for a short time or long time or whatever, after this suffering, and although he was suffering, when he saw those two females, he didn't say, well, actually, I have to help them, but I will not, because I already had enough, and I am tired, and I am thirsty, hungry, homeless, clothesless, hopeless, whatever, so I will not help them. No, he didn't. He kept on doing what he has to do. And this is another thing we need to learn. No matter how many people are attacking you, no matter how many troubles you have, no matter how many disasters happening to you, no matter whatever bad things are happening to you, never be away from the rules of Allah. Never put them together. Never say that. Anyway, I have a lot of problems and Allah is not helping me, so I will stop praying. No. Because when you pray, you are not praying for Allah, you are praying for yourself. When you are praying, you are not praying to pay something to Allah. No, you are praying to do something for yourself. Or someone say, from now on, I will not help anybody because, because I already had a lot of troubles, so I will not help anybody. Don't put them together. You are helping for the sake of Allah. Unless if you are helping to get the rewarding here from them, then this is something else. But if you are really helping for the sake of Allah, then don't put them together. Your problems and disasters and troubles and all of those things that they are happening to you, don't put them as an issue when you have the opportunity to do something for the sake of Allah. And this is one of the things that we need to learn. Musa alayhi salam with all of this suffering when he found that he has to do something based on his based on based on the rules of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he has to do something he didn't put it together with his suffering he right away he put it he did it and the, after he did it then he made the dua and he said oh Allah inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he appreciates it very well. He is the best one to appreciate our deeds. So Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, right away, فَجَاءَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِيَ عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا Right away, one of them came to offer him food. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala took him to a place. He sent him to a place that he was offered food. He was offered a place to sleep. He was offered to a place to eat and drink. And he got a job and he got a wife. He got everything in few seconds. He got everything. Was it difficult for Allah wa Ta'ala? Not at all. Not at all. It is depend on us. Is it difficult for us or not? If it is not difficult for us and we do it, it is only related to a determination. We do it, we get everything. Musa alayhi salam, when he heard this offer from that person, from that father, that you get married to one of them, and the dowry is to work here for eight hours, after eight hours you are free, you take your family and go wherever you want, and if you stay ten years it will be better, and then after ten years you are free, you get your family, go wherever you want, and I'm a good person. I will not torture you in those eight or ten years. And you will find out that I'm a righteous person. It means that you will find out that I am someone who is following the rules of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam, he replied. Now we are in ayah 28. Musa alayhi salam, he replied. قَالَ ذَلِكَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ أَيَّمَ الْأَجَلَيْنِ قَضَيْتْ فَلَا عُدْوَانَ عَلَيْ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى مَا نَقُولُ وَكِيلٌ Musa alayhi salam accept the offer. The offer. قَالَ ذَلِكَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ أَيَّمَ الْأَجَلَيْنِ قَضَيْتَ 
Musa alayhi salam, he said, this is a deal between me and you. So make it clear. This is a deal between me and you. Ayyam al ajalayni qadayt. No matter. Eight years or ten years. So Musa alayhi salam didn't confirm. He didn't say, okay, fine, I'll stay eight. And he didn't say, okay, fine, I'll stay ten. No, he said, okay, fine. I will stay either eight or ten. Ayyam al ajalayni qadayt. Fala udwana ali. You should accept. Don't, don't disagree. Don't change your word later. Fala udwana ali. Means, means I am free. After eight years, I'm free. Don't tell me, no, you have to stay out of two years. Clear? Wallahu ala ma naqulu wakil. And Allah is the witness for what we say. So Musa alayhi salam. He make it so clear. Why? Because Musa alayhi salam, he knew that he should make things clear. For us today, unfortunately, this is one of our problems today also, is that we don't make things clear. Unfortunately, most of us Muslims today, when we are doing anything, they say, just leave it to Allah. What leave it to Allah? Of course, leave it to Allah. Of course, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He is the one who is controlling everything. He is the one who is arranging everything and so on. But we need to have a system. We need to have agreement. We need to make things clear. So when we make things clear, and unfortunately, you know, this is one of the problems that we face where this is one of the biggest problems that we face when Muslim brothers, they want to get married to a non-Muslim sister. They don't make anything clear. They just say, you know, oh, let us get married. Okay, come with me to the masjid. And then there they will ask you to say something. Then you just say it. Then we become husband and wife. To say what? Just they will ask you to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's all. This means that you become Muslim. And anyway, it is simple. It is easy. It is nice. MashaAllah. Islam is nice. He will go to paradise. He will be so happy. And that's all. Then, okay, but I hear that Muslims, they have to pray. No, no, this is later. And I heard that Muslims, they have to wear hijab. No, no, this is later. And I heard that Muslims, they have to fast. No, it is not important. See? And then later, after 10 years marriage, she is not praying. She is not wearing hijab. She is not fasting. She, she is not Muslim, actually. And then you find the brother come to the imam and then he say, imam. My wife, for 10 years, she is not praying. She is not fasting. She is not wearing hijab. Shall I divorce her? Actually, she is the one who should divorce you, not you who divorce her. You know, because I don't want to go to hell because of her. No, actually, you may go to hell because of yourself. Did you make it clear for her at the beginning? Did you tell her at the beginning that, that to get married, you need to become a Muslim, you need to understand the Islam because we need a Muslim family, because I don't want my kids to grow up in the temple or in the church or away from Islam or whatever. Did you make it clear from the beginning? No. Why? Because actually, you know, we, we loved each other. Ah, okay, you loved each other, or you loved her nationality, or, or because you were homeless, you just went home, or because she was rich, or, 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 or. And then we say that, just leave it to Allah. No, it is not like this. We have to make things clear from the beginning. And if you are doing it, if you are getting married for other reasons than getting married, then this is adultery. This is not marriage. This is adultery. And we need to understand this very well. Musa, alayhi salam, he make it clear from the beginning. I agree. I'll get married to one of them. And we don't know wh whom did he get married to. We don't know. Some they say that actually he got married to the one who came to took him because Musa, alayhi salam, was not really happy to walk with her alone on the street. So he just get married to her just to, to, to make it that, that, that he is paying the compensation for walking with her alone. But, but we don't know. What we know is that Musa, alayhi salam, he got married to one of them. So Musa, alayhi salam, he accept. He accept and he make it clear. You said eight years or ten years. So whatever I finish, I'm free. If I finish the eight then don't attack me and say, no, you have to stay out of two years. And if I finish the 10, 
then I finish the tan and I'm free also. Clear? Now, before we move to Aya 29, I'll give you an introduction about Aya 29 and about the second part of the life of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he was living with, with his wife and with his father-in-law and his sister-in-law also, she was there, she got married, she didn't get married, she stayed at home or she got married and lived outside, we don't know. Musa alayhi salam, he was living with them at the same house or they had another house, they were living together, also we don't know. All what we know is that Musa alayhi salam, he was working there as what? As what? As a general manager of the company of his father-in-law? No. As a, a vice president of of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the chain company that his father-in-law had? No. Then as what? As a sheep keeper. Because they had sheep, that's all. And Musa alayhi salam, he was working as a sheep keeper. And this was the main thing. That why did those daughters, they asked their father to hire Musa alayhi salam because they didn't want to do this job or this thing of taking the sheep. They didn't want to do this job anyway. They didn't want to do any job anyway. They didn't want to go out. So Musa alayhi salam, he was a sheep keeper. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi once he worked also as a sheep keeper before. And this is for us to understand that whatever halal job you got, you take it. Don't say this is away from my home. This is, in, this is in another country, this is in another city, this is in another district. Oh, you know, I have to wake up early, so I have to come back late, or, 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 just take it. Take it. This is the only halal job you have so far. Take it and work on developing yourself. Work on getting better job, no problem. Work, you know, unfortunately, actually, most, most of the, the, uh, the students here, they are females, and, but anyway... Uh, I'm not talking to males actually in general, but for female also because now we are in this society, we are like this. We are, we are in a society that unfortunately people, they don't really take care of females. And then other people, they say that in Islam, you know, Muslims, they are controlling the female. Well, actually in non-Muslim countries, we find that females, if they don't work, they die. In Muslim countries, we find that if the man doesn't work, he will be dead. But anyway... You know, life today is upside down. Today, everything is upside down. Anyway, so as long as the job you are doing is halal, then don't feel shy. Actually, you have to feel shy when you are doing haram job. Even if from this haram job, you are getting big salary. Even if this haram job is a job that people outside, they envy or they like or they respect. But if Allah doesn't accept this job, then this is haram job. Then you should feel shy that you are doing this haram job and you should stop it. Musa alayhi salam, he accepted. And he has no problem to be a sheep keeper. After what? After what? After he was living in the palace of Fir'aun. Musa alayhi salam was living in the palace of Fir'aun and was not working. And no need for him to work. The people respect him. And he get everything, he and his family. And then from that life into a sheep keeper. So what do we learn from this? Musa alayhi salam, he was living a perfect life, but in a place full of haram, in a place full of, full of unjust, in a place full of hatred, in a place full of killing and torturing and all of those and arrogance and all of those bad things and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he moved Musa to train him in a pure place in a clean place no problem be a sheep keeper but you grow up in a way that you are a real believer a real righteous person who is able to handle the things related to dawah who is able to who is able to handle things related to spreading islam 
who is able to handle things related to following the rules of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam, he was trained in this house with those sheep, with this family, with this either either messenger, prophet, Su'aib alayhi salam, or a righteous person because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala mentioned that that person is righteous. Musa alayhi salam, he finished eight or ten when they asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about this, they asked him, how long did Musa stay with, with his father-in-law? So the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he said he stayed a longer time, which is the 10 years. So Musa alayhi salam, he spent the 10 years there, taking care of the family, taking care of the business of the family. And this is just for your information, they say in the story of Musa alayhi salam that when it was the time for Musa alayhi salam to leave, so his father-in-law, he told him, Musa, you are leaving soon. So I want to give you a kind of a retirement payment. You know, the, the payment that you get after these years of working. So... And that was the time that, you know, for the sheep to become pregnant, you know, to deliver the, the babies. So he told him that every sheep that bring a white sheep is yours. Actually, that time, this is what they say in the story. They say that that time, the whole sheep farm of the father-in-law of Musa, all of it, male and female sheep, they were black. All of them, they were black. Not anyone not black. All of them, they were black. And Musa, alayhi salam, the same stick. Remember the stick? Later, we will go to the story of the stick, inshallah, later, in other weeks. So Musa, alayhi salam, he was walking between the sheep and whenever he reached to one pregnant sheep with this with that stick he touched the belly of the sheep and then he say inshallah you you bring none black sheep actually according to the science and this is just you know for your information actually according to the science black sheep mother black sheep father what what baby sheep they will bring? Suppose black. According to the science, suppose black. They say in the story of Musa alayhi salam, it is mentioned that the whole, that all the mothers, all the sheep, all the pregnant sheep, they deliver white sheep. All of them. Now, why did I mention this in two minutes? First, to know that yes there is a system and there is science but when you are dealing with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is beyond all of those things it doesn't care about your system it doesn't care about your, your science this is one of the reasons why Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he created Adam from no mother no father and then he created Jesus from no father only mother so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is showing us that he has no problem to create without anything, without anybody, without any help. Why? It is for us to understand that when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wants to do something, then he doesn't need any system, any policy, any rules, any tools. He can do it without anything. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is able to do everything. All what we have to do is to ask him in a way that we deserve to get what we are asking for. We will stop here, inshallah. And next week, inshallah, we will start with the story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam away from his father-in-law's family. Because the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he, after 10 years, he will go back to start his real mission, to start his real mission, 
as a prophet who is going to talk to the most dangerous person in the world that time who was Fir'aun the one who said Ana ala, the one who said I am your Lord so we stop here and inshallah next week we keep going وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلِّمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ